In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God be with all of you. We gather together this evening to celebrate this glorious feast of the transfiguration of the Lord. Let us ask the Lord to fill us with his grace, his love, and his mercy, and to help us walk ever more closely with him. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks. Let us pray. O God, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, confirmed the mysteries of faith by the witness of the fathers and wonderfully prefigured our full adoption to sonship, grant, we pray, to your servants that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set up and the ancient one took his throne. His clothing was snow bright and the hair on his head as white as wool. His throne was flames of fire with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat. Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him and myriads upon myriads attended him. The court was convened and the books were opened. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the cloud of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord.
justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. The Lord is King, the Most High, over all the earth. The mountains melt like wax before the A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that unique declaration came to him from the majestic glory. This is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. Moreover, we possess the prophetic message that is altogether reliable. You will do well to be attentive to it as to a lamp shining in a dark place until day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. 
When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and they were very much afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening. I'm not Father Gary. You've probably figured that out. I'm Father John Fortin. I'm a Benedictine monk from St. Anselm Abbey in Manchester, and I am a professor of philosophy at St. Anselm College. Actually, my area of specialization is medieval intellectual history. Now, when people hear that, they think two things. They think first, oh God, he's gonna talk about something I know nothing about. And secondly, they think he's going to talk about it for an awfully long time. <laughs> well, Father Gary is not only out of town, he is out of the country. So he won't know how long I speak unless one of you tells him. I'm here on behalf of the Alliance for International Monasticism, USA. This alliance, the AIM, is a group of about 150 Benedictine, Trappist, and Cistercian monasteries in the United States and Canada who try to help out some 400 Benedictine, Cistercian, and Trappist monasteries in Africa, Latin America, Asia, and the Middle East. Now, since the AIM central office consists of three people, one full-time and two part-time, they rely on the monasteries throughout the United States and Canada to go out and make these appeals for financial support. In the Diocese of Manchester, the bishop allows us to come to one parish each summer. Congratulations. <laughs> AIM provides me with a prepared homily, but... You can read about it in the bulletin. I think there's some brochures and things that have been passed out. It tells you all about the great work that they try to do, try to help out these communities. Um, Benedictine, Cistercian, Trappist monasteries, uh, once they settle in a place, try to stay there. One of the vows we take is a vow of stability, which is to live in one monastery for our entire lives. So these places start up and they they really try to stay there and they become very local and they become autonomous. And they sometimes need a little extra help, which is what we try to provide. I myself have never been to any of these places. We have had visitors from those places at our abbey. We had two monks from Tanzania who went through the college. We had a couple of monks from South Vietnam who graduated from the college. And just a few weeks ago, we had two monks from Ghana who were visiting with us. Instead of the prepared homily, I'd like to tell you a little story. When the Korean conflict broke out, there was a call to all the Catholic clergy for chaplains. And one of the young men who responded to that happened to be a monk from St. Anselm Abbey. His name was Gerald McCarthy. He received permission from his abbot and he signed up and uh, enrolled or enlisted in the Air Force and was sent to Korea. While he was there, he was introduced to a group of Benedictine nuns who had been expelled by the communists from North Korea, and their orphanage closed down. And they were trying to reestablish themselves somewhere in South Korea to reopen an orphanage and perhaps even start a hospital. <clears throat> and this Father Gerald did whatever he could to help them out. While the conflict ended, as you know, Father Gerald returned to St. Anselm in New Hampshire, went on to earn a degree in sociology from Catholic University, eventually became president of the college, in 1963 was elected abbot of St. Anselm Abbey. When the years went by, he retired, but he continued to help out in our development office and keeping in touch with so many people that he had met over the years. 
But around the year 2000, his health really began to fail, and in February of that year, he was admitted to Catholic Medical Center. On February 3rd, 2000, the doorbell of the monastery rang, and there were two nuns from Korea, from that convent that he had helped start. They did not know him, but he was a legend in their community. They were in the country trying to raise support for their hospital and their orphanage, and they were told, you had better visit Father Gerald. So one of the monks drove them down to the hospital. Abbot Gerald was unconscious at the time, but they, they spoke with him, they prayed, they even sang in Korean. And the next day, he passed away. I get a little choked up about this. It was almost as if two angels had been sent from the other side of the world to see him off. My brothers and sisters, we are all in this together, and we have to help each other out. We have to do what we can to support one another, to grow in our faith, to grow in our hope, and to grow in our love. So I ask today for two things. The first is not as important to me, and that's for whatever financial support you can offer to those missionaries overseas. There are baskets at the entrance to the church on your way out if you wish to contribute. But more importantly, I ask for your prayers. Feast of the Transfiguration reminds us that we are all called to that same glory that the Lord Jesus manifested to his three disciples on Mount Tabor. All of us are called to that. And we all, as adopted children of God, created by the Father, redeemed by the Son, sanctified by the Spirit, we are all called to help one another along this way. I thank Father Gary for letting me come today and Bishop Labashi for allowing us to do this. I thank you for your generosity and your support and your prayers. God bless you all. I don't know if any of you have had the opportunity to sit in this chair. This is a trick chair. <laughs> this, this just drops right down to the floor. Let us together profess our faith in the God who saves us. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, all of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God from our name, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and in his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the church and for all who embrace the call to be missionary disciples, here on New Hampshire seacoast and throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the sick and all who care for them, may they experience renewed hope, peace, and healing in encounters with Jesus in word 
and sacrament. We pray to the Lord. For all life to be cherished, defended, and protected from conception to natural death without limit or condition. We pray to the Lord. For the embrace of summer opportunities that will lead to genuine renewal and refreshment of body and soul. We pray to the Lord. For all who have gone before us in death, especially Irene and Joseph Makonsky, for whom this Holy Mass is offered. May they know the peace and joy of the kingdom. We pray to the Lord. For one another and for the needs we carry in our hearts today, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers we bring before you. Make up for what is lacking in our faith, hope, and love with your divine grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join together in singing number 130, Transfiguration, number 130.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Sanctify, O Lord, we pray, these offerings here made to celebrate the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, and by his radiant splendor, cleanse us from the stains of sin, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he revealed his glory in the presence of chosen witnesses and filled with the greatest splendor that bodily form which he shares with all humanity, that the scandal of the cross might, might be removed from the hearts of his disciples and that he might show how in the body of the whole church is to be fulfilled what so wondrously shone forth first in its head. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, Francis, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be saved. During communion, the song will be number 356, I am the living bread. Number 356.
Let us pray. May the heavenly nourishment we have received, O Lord, we pray, transform us into the likeness of your Son, whose radiant splendor you will to make manifest in his glorious transfiguration, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Thank you again for allowing me to come uh, this weekend. Thank you for the warm reception. Um, and again, please, if you would, uh, remember those Benedictine, Cistercian, and Trappist missionaries in foreign lands, especially those who live under conditions which are a bit dangerous and unsecure. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 202. God, we praise you. Number 202.